staff may want to refer to the quick check and emergency treatment algorithms in these WHO publications or pocketbooks. The Integrated Management of Childhood Illness and the Integrated Management of Adolescents and Adults Illness. Remember the quick check for emergency signs involves first assessing the patient's airway and breathing. Check for airway obstruction. Check for central cyanosis. Check for severe respiratory distress and carry out the urgent treatments as well as giving oxygen. Here are some examples of airway obstruction. This patient has just developed partial airway obstruction and the nurse noticed that the patient's breathing was insufficient. The cause of this was a fall in conscious level. Nursing staff quickly open up the airway in this patient by tilting the head, lifting the chin and thrusting the jaw forwards, at the same time as giving oxygen. This patient is requiring suction to remove fluid that might obstruct the airway or be inhaled. If any vomit is inhaled, this can lead to very serious lung damage known as aspiration pneumonia. It's an important fact that around the world the commonest cause of airway obstruction is from a patient being unconscious. Here another unconscious patient is being safely and effectively nursed in the recovery position also known as the lateral position and this together with a simple oropharyngeal airway, ensures that the airway remains open and if there is any regurgitation or vomiting, the fluid will safely drain out of the mouth without causing lung damage. Notice that at the same time, this patient is being given oxygen through nasal cannula. This patient has central cyanosis this is a definite sign that oxygen levels in the blood are low and oxygen must be given immediately while a more detailed assessment follows. Unfortunately, there are many more patients with hypoxemia who do not have cyanosis. This patient has fast breathing. It might be due to hypoxemia, but there are other causes, including acidosis. It is often a sign that the patient's condition is severe and oxygen must be given immediately while a more detailed assessment follows. Every nurse and doctor must know the normal respiratory rates for adults and children and measurement of respiratory rate must be included in the assessment and monitoring of all acutely ill patients. A clock with a second hand or a simple timer must be used to count the respiratory rate over a full minute. If a patient has respiratory distress and they are conscious and their blood pressure is not low, then they will often benefit from being sat up into a position where breathing becomes more efficient. Okay, we're going to sort you out with a nebulizer. <laughs> this patient is confused. Confusion and agitation can also be late signs of hypoxemia and oxygen must be given immediately while a more detailed assessment follows. In summary, there are things we quickly check for that might need urgent treatment, including oxygen, while a more detailed assessment follows. But remember that without urgently correcting airway obstruction or breathing difficulties, any oxygen given will not easily enter the lungs and the patient's carbon dioxide will not be able to leave the lungs so carbon dioxide will build up in the blood and contribute to acidosis. Finally, because there are many more patients with hypoxemia who do not have cyanosis or respiratory distress, we will still need the more detailed assessment or measurements given in the following section on pulse oximetry.